that's no problem. But at those meetings, and I've been to this one particular meet, one particular panel I go to regularly, and I'm particularly monitoring it, they have interminable discussions, and they all get their diaries out. Can we meet this time? Can we do that meeting? Oh, I'm on such a committee or such and such a panel. I can't do that. They discuss for hours the same things, meeting after meeting. But in amongst all that waffle, which the public certainly don't need to know about. There are little gems that come up and they may be off the record comments and they would prefer the public aren't there when they make them, but they will say things, for example, like, oh, the Minister of Education are gonna have a sweeping cut of 600,000 pounds on this year's expenditure. And those things are said and they're picked up by nobody, but they are in the public domain and they should be picked up. And these things are flagging up problems and these things are occurring all the time in scrutiny and these things will disappear if these things start to be streamed because they will all go into the part B. They well, what out. I would say to you uh, there, Mike, is if those comments are being made, um, it surely behoves us as members of scrutiny to make sure that they are evidence comments. I mean, we know in politics, like every other area, loose comments are made and um, people pick up rumours and run with them and then all of uh, don't we know this? And then all of a sudden we realise that there isn't much substance, perhaps. But I would have said uh, your uh, role there is not necessarily to run with comments that appear to be uh, perhaps loose talk. Your role is to ensure that there are, at the regular meetings with the ministers, which scrutiny uh, holds, the whole idea of those uh, meetings is, A, they're informational, so you are going to get a lot of stuff uncriticised uh, in the early stages from a minister about what he or she is doing. And uh, that's where the issue is. The other thing I would say is, if you're not happy with um, uh, scrutiny's, um, say, program, for example, and sometimes the programs are discussed, obviously, in these meetings, or organisation meetings. If you're not happy, uh, there's no... I don't think you would ever be refused. You would, it would, we, would, we would desperately want people to say, look, you've got your priorities wrong. We get a few emails saying, I want this topic done, that topic done, and so forth and so on. But if someone were to come to us and say, I want to make a submission to your panel, you've got it badly wrong, you're going in the wrong direction, <clears throat> and I want it public. Yeah, the I difficulty, the difficulty with the formal scrutiny meetings that you will get ministers or their chiefs of departments coming along, they will be saying their set pieces, which they've all rehearsed beforehand. The public can sit there with greater knowledge and very often than the committee or the panel members actually have, and they will hear the, the minister or his uh, assistants talking absolute rubbish and giving false information, and the public have to sit there and can do nothing or say nothing. Uh, this is, and the questions from the panel very often are very inadequate because the panel members don't have sufficient knowledge. Then the minister goes away, he doesn't listen to what subsequent witnesses are saying, and the process is such a waste of time. Um, <clears throat> well, obviously, uh, you're entitled to that view, and yes, members, it is a very time-consuming process, and uh, obviously we are concerned about uh, its impact. Now, I think, though, there is another reason why it's time-consuming. It's a very deliberate and systematic way of collecting information. It's not politically sexy. It's much easier to be out there giving lots of sound bites, saying the government's corrupt, uh, so-and-so is involved in a never-ending conspiracy, and so forth and so on. Uh, it is easier to do that. It's a long process. But if you feel that, what is to stop you saying, look, I happen to have a lot of knowledge on this issue. OK, I'm biased. No big deal. We're all biased. And I happen to have a lot of knowledge. I don't like the, um, the direction. I think uh, fundamentally this ministry is going in, uh, in the wrong direction. You're uh, accepting this far too uncritically. Come along as a witness and tell us. Well, we have, I, I would, as you I know... I think you will find panels... As you know, would, would welcome you with open members arms. of Team Voice, for example, have come along as witnesses and we have participated. Yes. But for, uh, this, we have elected 53 states members to try and put views on our behalf. This is what the public do. There's an island plan out for consultation now. I could spend the rest entire year making comments on the island plan alone. The sheer volume of work which would come our way if we are to express views on everything which is of interest to us. I'm now giving you a long interview. This will have to be cut because it's far too long. But we're giving you an opportunity now to speak which mainstream so-called media will not allow you to have. Now if I can get you 10, 20 minutes, whatever I can get you, 
that's our part of our contribution towards getting information out there about the scrutiny process. Now, if I was to make a written submission of this, it would take me days and days to write it. Your lot, if, they were, if it was a scrutiny panel was receiving it, may or may not receive it. I would feel that you probably haven't taken due note of what I've yeah. said, and so it goes on. But this process, yesterday I asked Senator Shenton, uh, uh, after he came out of the meeting, and his response, he wouldn't speak to me on camera, his response was, if you think you can do better, stand for the states. Well, of course, that is the comment we hear all the time. As soon as we up pop and say something not necessarily even critical, just trying to seek information, that's the sort of comment we get from our so-called, he's got an all-island mandate, he supposedly represents me, this is the sort of banal comment we got. Well, you stand for the states. Well, that is not good enough. Uh, yes, uh, I don't know, maybe he didn't want to give an interview on the spot. He wanted... Uh, perhaps to go away and think about it, I don't know, uh, Mike. But what I would say to that is, one of the themes, oddly enough, of yesterday's um, seminar was, you know, to, where are we going wrong, where are we going right? And uh, one of the uh, outcomes was, we do have a lot more influence and power, actually, than, than we think we have, and it's about time we, uh, we started using it, which I think is good. And I, I would put the same to you. You have got the right, if you've got an interest in an area, none of us are experts on anything, although politicians are put under pressure to be so and are expected to be so, which leads to all sorts of unfortunate situations. But if you've got a view on an area and uh, you think that uh, official dim through the minister are going in the wrong direction, it would be, quite frankly, wonderful to hear. Well, uh, we, I mean, we, we do we, try to participate we, in our small way. We are. I mean, we don't want to get into never-ending <laughs> slanging, personal slanging matches, which is why, as you know, I've been hesitant about getting into certain areas. Uh, we don't want to do that. But if you want to have proper discussion about policy, and you want to tell us in a good, uh, systematic way where we're either going wrong or we're going right, I think that would be wonderful, quite frankly. Uh, we're desperate to have these discussions because I can assure you, uh, there's no way a panel likes to sit there, uh, although it does it initially for reasons of politeness, and just listen um, to, to what is basically um, the party line. You know, we, we, we listen at the start because we feel as a courtesy we have to allow the minister and, and his civil servants to put their view forward. Mm.